Well, hello everybody, and uh, good to be with you uh, again. As we move into Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and of course uh, Easter Sunday, and during this uh, Holy Week, I thought I would share with you quite a familiar story, actually from the Old Testament. Uh, it's the story of uh, Jacob and one particular incident uh, in his life, which I guess I'll just refer to uh, as the morning after uh, the night before. It's Genesis chapter 28, and I'm going to read it uh, from verse 10. And it goes like this. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the south and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you where, wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Recently, uh, a couple during the uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic had uh, two twins uh, born to them and they decided to call them uh, Corona and Covid. I think that if I was going to give a child a really good start in life, I might choose not to call them uh, after a killer pandemic. But there we are, uh, the choice has been made, the decision has been made and uh, hopefully that decision will be reviewed in the months and years uh, ahead. But maybe we should acknowledge that also that what the parents are wanting to demonstrate is that even in the midst of a real crisis there can be a beautiful gift, uh, the gift of uh, children. So perhaps they're wiser than I'm giving them credit for. But whether um, Corona and Covid will grow up regretting their names or not, whether their names will be associated with this present pandemic or not. And we're looking today at a man called Jacob, whose name definitely had associations. The name Jacob means schemer. And with Jacob, if not uh, the two aforementioned twins, a schemer by name, and also schemer by nature. And as you may know, even if you've never read the story uh, in the Bible, Jacob is on the run from his older brother Esau, whom he has tricked out of his birthright. Jacob is on the run. The schemer, once again by nature as well as by name, is on the run. And he's run away. And he's in the desert. He is, I guess, uh, self-isolating. He's uh, wanting to self-isolate from his brother and all of his uh, other enemies. He's very keen that his uh, enemies keep at least, as it were, two metres away, away from him. He's alone in the desert. He's on the run. He's Jacob. He's the schemer. And that night, um, God speaks to him. Jacob isn't the only person, of course, in the Old Testament uh, as, and also uh, in the New for whom God speaks into that place. We know, for instance, that God spoke to Moses whilst Moses was similarly on the run, actually. And God spoke to Moses through a burning bush. Nothing unusual about that in the desert, by the way, but this bush uh, would not uh, burn out. 
God found Moses when Moses was on the run. And God found Jacob when Jacob was on the run. And maybe today, in a sense, you're on the run. Maybe you're running away from God. Or at the very least, uh, you're having to self-isolate. You're by yourself. And uh, it's kind of feeling something now uh, of a desert. So Jacob, quite literally, is stuck between a rock and a hard place. Uh, and that night, with nowhere else to stay, he finds a very hard rock as a pillow, a pillow rather, and goes to sleep. And he dreams, and God speaks to him through a dream. And God very often speaks to people through dreams, in the Old Testament uh, and in the New Testament as well. And in this dream, Jacob sees angels ascending and descending between uh, heaven and earth, a kind of celestial escalator, as it has been called. And Jacob realises from this dream that God is with him, that he is in a place where heaven and earth have connected. Now, uh, in Old Testament times, there was a specific place. It was known as the Tent of Meeting in both the tabernacle uh, and its equivalent uh, in the temple uh, as well. The Holy of Holies, where only the high priest could enter, and even then only once a year, to encounter the presence of God, of God sorry, where heaven kisses earth. But to his astonishment, to his utter astonishment, Jacob, the schemer, on the run, self-isolating in the desert, finds himself in a place where there is this tent of meeting, there is this connection, there is this meeting place uh, between heaven and earth. You know, we can't uh, outrun God. God cannot be confined to a temple. God cannot be confined to a tabernacle. It's one reason why I really don't like religion or any notions of religion. God is everywhere and God is as present in the desert as, of course, his people learnt over 40 years in the desert. And God can be uh, in a church and God can be uh, in a tabernacle. God can be in holy places, but God is everywhere. And so I want to share this story with you to uh, encourage you that whether or not you're on the run from people or from yourself perhaps, perhaps you're not even on the run from God, but that if you are by yourself, God wants to speak to you and God wants to be with you and God wants your place where perhaps you are self-isolating, perhaps where you are in a desert. God wants this place to be a tent of meeting, a place where heaven and earth meet. I just think this is uh, an incredibly encouraging thought for our present time, and also, and more immediately perhaps, uh, as we move into Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, uh, and uh, Easter Sunday. I mean, one of the most amazing things about the story of the cross, and not everybody appreciates this, is that for a Jew, a cross was a place of utter abomination. It wasn't just the cruelest form of, of execution possible. It was the one place where we could be sure that God was not. In the Old Testament it said, cursed is the man who hangs on a tree. And the real astonishment of the cross, the real astonishment of the Easter story, is the one place where God would surely be absent, is the place where he is most present. And there is something of that here in the story of uh, Jacob. 
the one place where he thought God wouldn't be. It turns out that he was there. Surely God was in this place, said Jacob, uh, and I was unaware of it. I was reading a, um, a textbook not so long ago by a Christian writer, helping me to understand uh, God better and the nature of God better, uh, and he, he came out with quite an interesting one-liner. He said, there is no such thing as empty space. Now, that's true uh, at the uh, level of physics and chemistry, I guess, but that wasn't the point that the writer was making. The point the writer was making is that wherever we are, wherever there is space, there is God. In fact, he went on further to explain that the reason why God is spirit and not matter is, that, is because if God was matter, then there would be no room for anything else else. And so today, if you are self-isolating, or simply by yourself as you're watching and listening to, to this video, and you may feel that you are in a desert place, and you may feel that there's no hope, I want to encourage you and reassure you that God is everywhere, God is around you, and God wants you and he to be a place where heaven and earth meet. Maybe you are on the run from God. Maybe you are on the run from other people. Maybe you're running away from your conscience. Maybe you're running away from past memories past painful memories and God wants to say to you you can't outrun me I'm everywhere I want you and me to be the place that place of meeting that temple of meeting where you and I connect where you and I have a really special relationship together Jacob in this story, in uh, Genesis uh, 28, is at the place of no hope. Like Moses, he's completely fouled up and he's alone in the desert. God hadn't given up on Moses and God hasn't given, hadn't given up sorry, on Jacob. And God hasn't given up on you. So whatever you're feeling, uh, today, perhaps a, a sense of trepidation, perhaps you literally are in self-isolation. God is around you, he loves you, there is hope, and he wants to have that place of meeting with you. You can live on earth in a relationship with the God of heaven. I challenge you to respond like Jacob and say, well, surely God is in this place and I wasn't aware of it, but I am now and I want to respond to this message of hope. I wonder if you could just uh, say a short prayer with me now. Loving Lord Jesus, I'm tired of being on the run. I'm tired of feeling alone. I'm tired of religion. But I do want you, Lord Jesus. So come into my heart. I'm sorry for the wrong things that, like Jacob, I have done to you and to other people. And I want to begin again with you and with other people. Lord Jesus, may you and I be the place where heaven and earth meet. Amen. Amen.